What's up? I'm Kimmer from Kimmer's Books. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about is this analogy of how writing is like growing a tree in reverse, right? So what is that? What does that mean? It's the analogy that I use to describe my writing process of how to create a story, right? Because like when you read a book, the way that you read a book, it's almost like rowing a canoe, right? Like a rowboat you're moving backwards. You can't see what's in front of you and you're discovering the story. You can look back, you can see what you've already read, but you don't know what's ahead of you in the path. That's why it's adventurous. You don't know what's gonna happen, right? There's clues, there's clues in what you read and you can look back at those clues, but you can't look forward. You have no idea what's gonna happen unless you're one of those weird cheaters who looks at the end of the book to see whether or not it's something you wanna read. Don't do that. Um, so, it, what's this analogy mean? Like it's like growing a tree in reverse. Well, like let's look at a tree, right? And remember those tree diagrams that you did in school where you plotted out like probabilities and sequences of events. Let's take this tree that I've got right here. So this tree here, if you were looking at writing a tree in the way that you would read, right? The beginning of the story would be at the trunk where you put the seed in the ground and then it spurts out. There's an inciting incident. That's this big, huge, thick base for your story, right? And then as you read, you go upwards through the story structure, hit characters that branch out into other character stories, right? There's all these split stories. And each of these character storylines, they have these little endings at the tip of the branch, right? And it's very exciting. And there's so many different ways that the story can unfold in front of you, right? That is reading. That's how you read a book. That's how somebody writes if they're a, uh, if they do it by the seat of their pants, right? If they're a pantser, which I just think is bad writing, right? You have to use some kind of like story structure and some kind of building so you know where you're going. So this is what brings me to the analogy of writing for me is like growing a tree in reverse. So for me, when you want to create an epic story with all these all these like little clues and hints, like a mystery, like Harry Potter that lead to this grand finale. What's really important is to know where the story is going, right? If you're a reader and you're rowing your canoe, you know, it unfolds as you read. If you write like that though, it's inappropriate. You want to know where you're going because you want to be able to guide the reader through their journey, right? The reader doesn't know where they're going, but you do. That's your job as the writer. So the way that I look at writing a story is you actually start at the very end of your book or novel, what short story, whatever it is. You start at the very ending. If you're writing a book series like I am, like a seven, eight, you know, book novel series, then you start at the very last book at the very, very end. That way you know where the reader is going. So you have all these character stories, right? And you start the very, very tip, the very end of each of these branches, each of the ending storylines for your characters, right? And then what you do is you work your way back to the inciting incident in the beginning of the story. Now, why do you do this? Why is this effective? Like, why am I so passionate about this style of writing? Here's why. When you write a story, if you start from the beginning where the trunk is, where the seed goes in, right? And you move your way upward through the trunk and into the branches, you have no idea where you're going. It can branch off into a million different directions and your story becomes messy. It becomes confusing. It becomes hard to put together. It becomes hard for the reader to understand how you're getting from point A to point B because the truth is you don't know either. You're discovering it yourself and the discovery process is amazing, but it needs to be controlled. It needs to make sense. A plus B it needs to equal C. And the way that you do that is you want to know your C and you want to know your A. So what you do is you start with the tip here, you create an inciting incident, you plant your seed, and then you work your way, not from the seed to the end of these tips, you work your way from the end of these tips, the end of each character storyline, all the way back down to the seed, the inciting incident. And then that first chapter of your story, that way, when you're writing, guess what you've done? You've created an, a starting point for writing. That's the end, the tip of these trees. And you've created one destination. And when you're writing your book this way, when you're writing your book backwards and not forwards, then you know where you're going. Every single storyline, you start from the tip, 
and you write in one direction, all converging to one final destination. Instead of writing in the opposite way, which is totally confusing, by starting with the seed, starting with the inciting incident, and going into no man's land, not knowing your ending, and not knowing where you're going for all these character storylines. I highly recommend this style of writing. I've seen it happen again and again and again and again and again when stories don't know where they're going. They're not good. Naruto. Naruto is a great, great manga. Then the anime got ahead of the manga, ruined it. They didn't know where they were going. Same thing, Game of Thrones. Final book didn't come out yet. It wasn't good pacing. So then they came in, they filmed it before George R. R. Martin wrote the final book, and it was badly paced. They didn't understand how the branches were supposed to play out because they didn't have the founding material to know where those branches were going to go. They were creating the show just like a reader reads a book. They were rowing backwards and they had no idea what was out in front. They couldn't pace things correctly in their story branches. They didn't go out in a way that made sense for the viewer, right? This is what happened in the movie Lost, the TV show Lost. You, you felt like they had no idea where they were going. You eventually became lost in the show Lost. It was great. It started out epic. It was amazing. Then they had the writer strike. Then they got lost. <laughs> you had no idea where you were going in that story. It just was like, ah, everybody's been there when they've read a story that isn't planned out, where all the pieces aren't already put together. And it's hard from the publishing standpoint because you got, you know that you're going to get things changed up, right? If you traditionally publish, you know that there's going to be this war between you and the traditional publishers and you're going to have to figure out how everything, you know, comes together when they're going to want to change things and you're going to want to keep things later in your story. Uh, and understand that that's difficult and it's, it's, it's tedious, right? It's like a mathematical process. But there's creativity in the process. Every house has a foundation. That doesn't mean that you can't create artistic real estate. Same thing with your book. Every book has a solid foundational structure, particularly the best sellers. Particularly the best sellers. You got Harry Potter, read so much like the Bible in a much more abstract way, a clearer cut version. You've got Fifty Shades of Grey. It's a pretty much an exact replica of the story structure of uh, Twilight, right? I think it actually was a Twilight spoof or whatever you want to call it, like sexy romance, before it got before it got switched over. So look at writing like growing a tree in reverse, right? You're the god of your story. You don't need to start with the seed. You do want your C and your A. You want your A and your C. And you want to go from C to A, right? Highly recommend going from C to A. Not A to C, go to C to A. Right? Go in one direction. When you go from A to C, you're going in multiple directions. Go from C to A. And uh, you're going to find this process much more enjoyable. You're going to find that it doesn't hinder your creativity. You're going to find it boosts your creativity. And you're going to find that it's going to make your story 